Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Hayes Crew Outside. I'm Hayes Crew. Been in the uh, lawn care business one way or another for about 30 years, and one of the things my customers always ask me, especially in Tidewater, Virginia, what type of grass is best for Tidewater? You know, or they'll look at a, a neighbor's lawn and say, "Look, I want that grass." In Tidewater, there's a bunch of different grasses that grow. None of them grow well. Uh, so. What I wanted to go over in this video is the different grasses that will grow in Tidewater, but because Tidewater is a transitional area, everything grows here, nothing grows well, and you kind of have to pick your poison. Because at some point in the year, you're probably going to be unhappy with the lawn. It's just picking when you want to be unhappy. So the, the main grasses that grow here, that as far as turf grasses, you're looking at fescue, which is the main one. It's a cool season turf. And then, of course, you've got your St. Augs, uh, your Bermudas and you have your Zoysias and in some cases centipede but because of the cold weather here centipede will grow but you're kind of rolling the dice of whether or not it's going to get winter damage or just die off. So let's talk about fescue which is the main grass people like. The reason why people like fescue is it tends to stay green all year. It's easy to establish. You go to the store, buy a bag of seed, throw it down, poof, 14, 21 days later, grass comes up, looks like you're doing something. Um, and it's clump growing because it's a, a grass seed you're, you're going to put the grass seed down and it's going to grow exactly where you put the grass seed so it doesn't grow into the, the flower beds. The warm season turfs which is everything else grows on stolons or rhizomes or, or as I call it wire. You know, a lot of people call it Bermuda wire grass, some people call it crab grass but it, it basically continues to spread throughout the growing season and that's what people don't like about it. Uh, whereas fescue, again, stays where it's put and it's uh, green up and down the entire blade and it's really the softest, best, best looking grass as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it does have some issues. Uh, one, you don't want to see it in the spring. That's when you're putting down crabgrass control, weed control. It doesn't have time to get a root structure established. So you always want to seed your, your fescue uh, all end of August, September, October time frame. That's it. Uh, obviously put some fertilizer on it to get it established and again it's going to grow year-round nice and green a little bit more cutting than the rest again not so bad the challenge with fescue is that it's a cool season grass so when you're growing it in the summertime you're forcing it to do something it doesn't want to do it wants to go dormant during the summer so you're going to need to water it you're going to need fungicide it's going to get fungus something called brown patch i call it the athlete's foot for the lawn um, and it's going to make it some other issues, but the heat stress and the fungus, 100%. And if you've got a monotypic lawn or you know, pure fescue lawn, if you're not doing those two things, a lot of that's going to be dead by the time you get to August. Now, nice thing about fescue is if it's damaged, again, you buy that bag of seed, you put it down, poof, it's, you know, it's looking good again. Grass starts to grow within 14 to 21 days. So just know that if you have a fescue lawn, pure fescue lawn, you must put fungicide on it and you're going to have to do some water. Uh, probably I'd say eight, nine months out of the year you'll be really happy with it. Yeah, three months out of the year maybe not. Uh, but I find a lot of customers, if they just know what to expect, they're not as unhappy if they're expecting to be perfect year round. Same, same situation. So the other grass, I'm going to go with the, the two kind of middle of the road uh, that my customers have. One is St. Augustine and the other one's Georgia. Uh, I like both of them. Uh, zoysia will turn brown, and we'll show some pictures of that later in, in the uh, video, but zoysia turns brown in the winter. So does St. Augustine if you're lucky. Um, right now, zoysias are, are brown everywhere. St. Aug, if it's in full, full exposure, still brown, whereas if it's protected, it's now green. It's still green, which is not a good thing. But both of them grow on runners, meaning they will spread into your flower beds, grow out into the sidewalks, and that's why a lot of people don't like it. Plus it turns brown and people don't like brown. The great thing about these grasses is that they're less expensive to grow and easier to maintain. Basically set it and forget it once you've got them established. I'd never water my lawns during the summertime except for fescue uh, or extreme drought. And Zoysia and St. Augustine grow like weeds. The St. Augustine grows super fast. You want to keep it cut four inches or better is shade tolerant. I'm going to show you some pictures later of, of St. Augustine actually growing in the shade. 
Zoysia, on the other hand, will not grow in shade. If you're looking at something that says shade tolerant, don't believe it. It needs full sun. And the challenge with Zoysia is it grows super, super small. Now, I call it a challenge. You might consider that really good. The problem is if Zoysia gets damaged from you know, some form of winter issues, some of that nature, it takes it forever for it to repair itself. I had uh, one property where it had some snow damage, snow sat on lawn too long, and it took it 18 months for it to get back to thick and lush and plush. Whereas, you know, again, a fescue gets damaged, boom, bag of seed looks great again. You'll find zoysia seed, but I've, I've seen it twice with zoysia seed, never seen any of it come up. St. Aug, same situation. You'll find that bag, which is very expensive. The best way to, to promote a, a zoysia uh, St. Augustine lawn is to sod it. And some people say, well, why don't you plug it? You can, but plan on that being a very long process. But if you're trying to save a couple bucks, plug it, it'll eventually uh, take off. But again, much longer period than say a bag of fescue, boom, you're good to go. Uh, there is centipede out there. I've been growing centipede in my backyard for about two years just because I want to see what it'll do. Um, right now, it's, it's kind of gone dormant. It doesn't completely go dormant in the winter, but you can see some damage to it. And again, it took me two years of seeding the property to get about 50% coverage if it doesn't die this winter, I'll have 100% coverage by the end of next year. And I love the way centipede looks. It's just not the best grass for tidewood. More of a southern grass. They call it the poor man's grass, which is perfect for me because I'm a poor man. <laughs> Less maintenance is what I'm looking for. I like my stuff to look good, but I've got other things to do. Uh, so I'll, I put in low maintenance type turf. And then of course, uh, the other grass that's out there, the, the second most popular grass is Bermuda, and there's really two forms of it. There's the common Bermuda, which grows naturally in tide water, naturally wherever you go, seeds itself, grows on runners. If, you, if you're looking out at your lawn right now in January, and it's brown, it's not crabgrass, it's Bermuda. And most customers hate common Bermuda because it grows into their flower breads. It's brown right now. You're trying to grow fescue and you've got a splotchy green-brown mix. And, and people want that uniform look. You know, whether it's green, whether it's brown, they just that one color. And Bermuda fescue, if you're not doing it right, kind of mixes it up. Uh, but common Bermuda is one I really like because it's easy to grow, grows naturally. If it's in full sun, keep it cut at two inches. It's going to spread on its runners. Be nice and, and compact and green. I set it, I forget it, I don't ever have to worry about it. I, I scalp it, it still looks great, and I never have to water it. It doesn't get fungus, uh, just an easy grass to grow. But a lot of people don't like to look. But if you're looking for low maintenance, you don't have to aerate and seed it really. Aeration will help to some extent, but you never have to aerate and seed it once it's established. Uh, just a cheaper, I call it the Oldsmobile grasses, whereas fescue's kind of a Ferrari. Looks pretty, but man, it's a lot of maintenance. Whereas the Oldsmobile, it's going to get you to where you want to go, last forever, um, and just inexpensive as far as a grass type. Now, the great thing that the builders have been doing recently, new, new construction homes, they used to put down fescue side, and as soon as they put it down, boom, it's dead because there's no one there to maintain it. Right now, they're starting to put in hybrid Bermuda sod, which looks very pretty. It's, it's compact, doesn't grow very fast, has a finer, prettier blade. The challenge is it's still not always maintained right and customers kind of forget about it and all of a sudden they've got half dead sod out there and the challenge with hybrid Bermuda, you can't seed it. You either have to sod it or put something else in there and now you have that discoloration. You can still put common Bermuda in there but it's not the same look. So all, the one warning I give you is new, new homeowners, if, if you've got the Bermuda sod, take care of it right away. It's thousands of dollars. You paid for it. It came with the house, but paid it, you, know, you, you paid for it with the house. And the moment it dies, you're going to have a hard time. And it's going to be very expensive for you to get, get a lawn back that you're going to want. Take care of that sod. It's thousands of dollars. All right. If you don't know how, call somebody. And one of, I've worked for the big box spray companies before. Uh, if nothing else, they'll give you some tips on what you need to do. But for the price, they're not bad. Um, but what I like to do, and this is my personal preference and what I find most of my customers are looking for, um, because I've got customers that will give me that blank check, make my lawn the best on the block, give me what I want. Okay, I can do that blank check. And then I have 
you know, little old ladies on Social Security. I just need the dandelions knocked out. I can't get out there, but I don't want to be the eyesore for the neighborhood. They have a lot of pride in, in what they have. So, and then I've got customers everywhere in between. But the grass that I think that is, is really best for everybody, and I do it with my front lawn, it's a fescue, common Bermuda mix. And here's why. Bermuda turns brown in the winter, fescue turns brown or dies out a lot during the summer. So what I do is in September, I seed my lawn with fescue, cut it real low, the Bermuda slows down its growth low, turns brown low. Fescue's gonna grow up to three inches. So between the fall and spring, I've got a nice green winter lawn. Now fescue's still a perennial. So by March, April, it's the most green, screaming green lawn out there, beautiful. But then as soon as it starts to get hot, say around June, the heat starts to stress it, it starts to come in and thin out the fescue slowly. But the Bermuda kicks in. So now I have a fescue Bermuda mix. And as the fescue dies going towards August, the Bermuda gets better and better and better looking. So by the end of the summertime, I'm, my fescue is almost completely dead versus the Bermuda now, which is at its peak. It looks its absolute best when the fescue is pretty much gone because of heat and disease. That's what promotes the Bermuda. So I have that transitional kind of mix, June, July, August, seed first of September, boom, fescue comes back up and I have that nice blend. Uh, but again, if you're going for pure monotypic lawn, fescue is going to be very expensive. The other grass, again, warm season turfs, once they're established, that's going to be the cheapest and they look good during the summertime. And when they turn brown, for those of you who don't know, they're not growing. So a Bermuda lawn, Zoysia lawn, once they're brown, you're only cutting maybe six months out of the year. And I like that. I like not having to cut it. But part of the reason why my front yard is, is fescue Bermuda is my wife likes that curb appeal. She wants it green year round. I'm keeping her happy, you know. Plus, I like it. And again, the backyard where, we're, uh, where we do our playing, where we have, uh, we've got a pool in the backyard. We've got... Uh, we play cornhole, a lot of traffic. I like the Bermuda lawn or the centipede lawn, St. Aug lawn, because it repairs itself as we use it. Whereas fescue does not, and then, you know, by the end of summertime, it's dirt, and you, you don't want to be playing on dirt. So, just a quick recap fescue, kind of a Ferrari grass, high maintenance, only plant in the fall, but it's clump growing, won't grow into your flower beds. Gotta apply water, gotta apply fungus. Uh, common Bermuda, natural to the area. It's your cheapest grass. If you don't mind it turning brown, it's it's going to look good in the summertime. And you know, go brown in the winter. You don't have to cut it. Zoysia, St. Augs, next best grasses. Zoysia, super thick, almost like carpet. Very difficult to cut, uh, but it's beautiful, slow growing. And again, St. Augustine, keep it cut as tall as you can stand it. Get some insect issues, chinch bugs, a little bit of fungus, but overall, once it's established, good low maintenance grass. Cut, cut it as tall as you can stand it, four inches or better. And then again, centipede. If you want to play with it, if you want a project, uh, get some centipede. It's a, you can buy it on Amazon. It's fun to play with. Plan on that being a year to two year process, depending on how much you put into it. But I really appreciate you guys watching. Hope that helps. Check out uh, the description box. I got some links on there. And if you have questions, put it in the comments. I love talking lawn care. Again, I've been doing this 30, 35 years, worked on golf courses and so on. Um, it's just one of those things that it's a passion. So again, I'd love, you know, love to help you out if you have questions, keep point you in the right direction. Uh, but let's look at some other uh, grasses out there. I'm going to put some stuff at the end of the video. But again, please like and subscribe. Let's get on.